The MMA Report continues. It's John Pollock with you here on TSN Radio in Canada. And coming up on Friday night, February the 19th, it's Bellator 149, a huge card from the Toyota Center in Houston, Texas. And one of the key marquee fights happening at the Toyota Center features Kimbo Slice taking on the man that joins us now, Dafir Harris, more recognized as Dada 5000. And uh, Dada, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. How are you doing today? Man, I'm blessed, man. Thanks for having me. What has this whole experience been like for you with such a massive card that Bellator is putting on? There's certainly a huge grudge element and a lot of interest in this fight uh, between you and Kimbo going into the 19th. Yes, it is. Man. Um, I would just say this um, is long overdue. You know, I think that it's something that the people have been anticipating, you know, for now quite some time, you know, and uh, it's finally going to go down. You know, the great people over there at Bellator, MMA, you know, they are. Uh, had what it took, you know, to put this card together, you know, and uh, it's going to be epic. It's definitely not getting out of the first round. Somebody's getting knocked out, you know, that much is for sure. Wow, a big and guarantee. It's not going to be me. How did, uh, who re- reached out to you first, and what was your initial reaction when Bellator contacted you? Was this an easy decision to make? Was it a lot of back and forth in order to get this fight signed and, and ready to go? I'll tell you like this, you know, um, Mike Hogan, reached out to me on a Tuesday, right? Uh-huh. Friday, I was at Bellator 145 in St. Louis coming out to make the announcement official. Wow. So if that's quick enough for you, then, yeah. What was that scene like, coming out and being introduced by Scott Coker, and there you are with Kimbo? It's no secret, the animosity between you two. Uh, was that uh, difficult? What was the tension like between you two there on the stage? I mean, you could have cut it. You could have you, you cut it thick. You know, um, right out of the air, you could have cut a slice out of one of the clouds, man. I think that um, it was not surreal for me because, you know, I had a dream the night before, you know, that I was going to fight. Thank you. I had a dream the night before that I was going to fight this dude. And the next day I get the call. So that was confirmation, you know, uh, affirmation, me claiming the victory. You know, uh, I really feel like there's nothing that this guy can do with me, you know, I'm by far his most dangerous opponent because I know him better than anybody, you know. I know him better than anybody who he's ever fought. I'm bigger, faster, stronger, smarter, hit harder, and I'm more technical, you know. I'm like a more advanced version coming from the same place that we both, you know, have uh, done battle, and that's in the backyard. A lot of people have heard Kimbo's side of the story involving the conflict, but between you two, but I want to give you a platform here. Where where did this conflict begin between you two, where you went your separate ways and led to this bad blood between the two of you? Well, you know, um, the conflict was that they kept lying to me. I've done back to our fights for those guys, and they never put the footage out. You know, him and his uh, mule of a manager, you know, and I got sick and tired of it. You know, I'm going to believe you until you give me reason not to. They're not good people. He's not a good guy. You know, uh, he's very selfish. His whole movement was built around him. If you were going to get any daylight, he was going to snuff you out. So it's like I seen that coming, and I didn't want to be a part of it. So I removed myself, and I told those guys I was going to start my own gamut. And I did just that, and they told me I was making a big mistake. And I ask these guys to this day, do you really still think that I made, you know, a big mistake? What were some of your feelings watching Kimbo go up? Uh, he's fighting on CBS, then he went to the UFC, now with Bellator. Did you believe that one day this fight was going to happen, or had you kind of... Yes. You always yes. knew it would happen. Yes, I always thought that it would happen because, you know, he was making a name for himself um, one way, and I was making a name for myself another way. But I knew that we would both, you know, end up getting getting there. He he was on our show last week, and he was he was critical of the way you've gone around uh, promoting backyard fights, the safety elements, and concerns about that, and has been very critical about the way you, you've gone about your career. At, How would you defend look at, that? Look at this guy being a model citizen for once in his lifetime. You know, with all of the stage fights that this guy was doing inside the backyard, notice he had control. All of the fights that he ever put on in the backyard, except for one, which was the one that he messed up to do. Ah, everything else was staged. The, the victor already was determined. Those guys were all paid off, you know. And he, he's been baby his whole career. Uh, he fought older guys that were past their prom or younger guys. And he still was getting his ass kicked. You know, this guy is a hoax. He's a joke. 
you know, now he's going to step aside the ring to, to, with, with somebody that when he swings, they're going to stand in his chest and swing back, you know? So they say, hey, Dada, would you take a payoff? No, that's not in my vocabulary. But this dude is worth more to me knocked out or submitted nastily in the front of the world. You know what I'm saying? Come Bellator, you know, 149. He says that um, he did, he doesn't approve of how I did the backyard. I've won two Emmys off of the backyard in D.C. You know, I think I did a very job, very nice job, because I, I never made it about me. He's an idiot. His tongue does not come to a custom. You know, he probably thought that you said something else, you know. But me, I'm going to answer the question correctly. I've given other individuals opportunity, right? to live their dream. We got guys in the UFC thanks to my backyard. What has he done for somebody else? He's selfish. His whole movement is selfish. You know, I put others first. Watch my movie, Dog Fight. Mm-hmm. It'll share with you. And to the millions of fans that that, 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 that that listen to your show, watch Dog Fight on Netflix. D-A-W-G. It's real, it's raw, it's authentic. This is what we do. We change lives. You know, I went very big with ESPN Maxim, National Geographic, you name it, I did it. But I didn't do it for me. I did it showcasing the talent on my guys in the backyard. That's the difference between me and him. So we had medics out. They didn't have to be visible to the camera's eye. You know, we understand that safety is key. This guy has no knowledge of what he's talking about. He hasn't been to Perrine in 10 years. He doesn't know what the hell is going on in Perrine. He doesn't know. He's been off the scene. Anytime you ever see him in Prime is when it's beneficial to him. It's when it's conducive to him. You know? Yeah. So it's like this is election time, you know? So a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, are still voting for him. And I'm like, dude, what have you done for you lately? But the decision is yours. The choice is yours. This dude is selfish. You know? One thing's for sure, two things for certain. He will lose. And his career will be over. February 19th. Were you at Bellator 149. Were you surprised, Dada, that he accepted the fight? Um, he didn't have a choice. I'm not a small timer, man. I got the number one movie in the world out on Netflix. I have front cover uh, 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 of ESPN. I went very big in Rolling Stones magazine. ESPN four times. Maxim, National Geographic, Vice. I worked with Tiger Woods on the phone on each of you on EA Sports games. Commercials. You know? All the superstars, from George Lopez to Akon to Rick Ross to 50 Cent, you know, we're doing some we're doing some stuff. So it's not like he's doing me a favor. I was doing pretty well before this fight. Are he, you... he just couldn't avoid it any longer. And when Bellator, plus I'm under heat, no one has gotten out of the first round. And there's a lot more. So it's not like he was doing me any favors. He just couldn't run anymore. Have you signed a, a multi-fight deal with Bellator? Are you looking to fight beyond uh, February 19th with the promotion? Well, can you say this? No, I just signed the one-fight deal. Um, I just want to get, get out there, beat this guy, bust him up real bad, you know, and remind him never to forget where you come from, number one. With Bellator, you know, um, after this, you know, it was talks about, you know, hey, listen, what is your game plan? What is it that you want to do? I can't say now. I mean, I would like to come back and do some additional things, but I already have a lot of stuff, you know, going on. So we just got to position it all and make it make sense. If the, if the great people, the fans want me back, how can I disappoint? I cannot let them down. Are you doing anything different preparing for this fight that, than any of your other prior bouts? Any specific people that, that are helping you train and prepare for this fight? Am I doing anything different than I did my other fight? Yeah, I'm training. <laughs> yeah, I'm training. I didn't train for the other two fights. And is that is so, that? Are 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 you finding it's just a, a completely different world here, where you're training and you have somebody that's monitoring everything you're doing? Are you are you finding that no, you're learning a lot? Motiv- of- well, well, you know, I'm motivated. I'm motivated. You know, that's 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 the key. You know, um, and by me being and by me being motivated, that puts me out of a position. You know, to say, hey, listen, this is something that I have to do. I got to get past this guy. Losing is not an option. To beat me, you got to kill me. You know what I'm saying? And this is all some rocky stuff. To beat me, you got to be in a position. Of, you got to first stand, have a heart to stand in front of me. And to do that, you got to be willing to die yourself. This dude has no idea of the danger that he put himself directly in the front of. I punch through objects. I'm too big. I'm too massive. And I'm smart. I'm 
I'm smarter than him. They said dollar five thousand. You fighting Kimbo Slice? I'm like, yeah, okay, so what? You know, you better be great. I say, no, I don't have to be great. I just got to be better than him that night. That's all I got to do. I just got to be better than him. He well, never put the cart before the horse. And he's definitely put the uh, the cart before his horse. And he's looking past. He stated something on uh, to the extent that after this fight, he's going to fight Roy Jones or he'll fight, you know, uh, Kurt Angle. Uh-huh. You know, and I'm like, whoa, that's an insult. Now i got to hurt him. I'm going to hurt him regardless. But now i really got to hurt him because you just totally overlooked me, you know. So now i got to bring you back to reality, you know, when you heal up. You know, your time may be gone, but you're too old. You get a broken bone, you're not going to heal this. You're not going to heal it quick, you know. This is just that serious. This is just that personal. This part is personal. The personal could get. Well, the final thing here, Dada, and we gave Kimbo the same platform last week, and uh, I want to hear from you. A final message here uh, for Kimbo Slice as we go into February the 19th. We have a lot of listeners out there. What is your final message to Kimbo? How is this going down in Houston, Texas? Because a lot of people are excited about this fight. Kimbo Slice, don't show up. Go on it on, you know what I'm saying, and take the fine and just let Bellator go on it on the county contract. Because you show up, I'm going to hurt you very, very bad. This fight right here will be one for the ages. You know, Bellator 149, Spike TV, 9 o'clock p.m. You know, this right here is what we're going to do. You know, man, you come out and don't forget to bring that drama that you spoke of. Bring it. Bring all of it. Bring all your disrespect. Bring every every negative word that you had to say about me. I'm going to do my talking inside the ring with ease. You're rude, you're disrespectful, and there's no respect for the disrespect. And come Bellator 149, when you get in that ring, I'm a chick. Three people are getting in. Only two are coming out, me and the referee. And you ain't got to be a rocket scientist to figure out who's getting left. Shout out 5,000, 305. I am Miami's best. Amazing stuff. Dada, thank you so much for the time and all the best going into Bellator 149 happening at the Houston Toyota Center. We're going to be watching 9 p.m. Eastern on Spike. All the best, Dada. Thank you for this time. Thank you.